guys, so I'm out here at the Ferguson Forest Centre. I just picked up a bunch of white pine trees, uh, about 40 of them, and also five highbrush cranberry. I have a goal at the cabin of planting uh, a large, you know, basically a windbreak by the, by the road, um, and basically reforesting part of the field. So uh, the goal I have is to do over 200 plus uh, white pine in that area um, over the next five to ten years. So I'm gonna get started this weekend and I'll take you along on that adventure. Um, the first step though is picking up my trees that I ordered. So you can see them right here. I've got them in this uh, lovely bag to keep them nice and moist. And I would keep them in a shaded area until I get to the cabin. So uh, why I'm building this windbreak, it's, it's really good for environment to you know, keep forests alive and sort of reforest areas, especially in the province of Ontario where you know, we have a lot of um, deforested areas for uh, you know, agriculture and things like that. So that's my plan. I'm also part of the Managed Forest Tax Incentive Program or the MIFTIP program. I'll talk a bit more about that um, in a future video. Uh, but basically, for good, you know, woodlot practices, you know, you end up getting a bit of a tax break, a very significant tax break, actually, um, for properly managing your land. Um, things you can do would be, you know, planting trees, monitoring wildlife, hunting, you know, managing your woodlot, doing firewood, replanting, things like that, trail making. So I'm going to get started with building this windbreak this weekend, and I'll take you along. Good morning guys. Through the magic of YouTube, I am now at the cabin. It is the end of April and uh, getting ready to do the planting of the windbreak that I talked to you guys about just a, a few segments ago. And so here I'm in the field and you can see we've got some acreage here of field and we've got lots of uh, white pine. Let's zoom in on these little guys here. So these guys are a few years old. They're a natural um, plant actually. So there's some parent stock. This guy right here is a huge white pine. And there's another one right there. And uh, as you can see, lots of uh, regrowth is happening naturally in the field. This is actually quite remarkable. Uh, I don't think you could plant a tree plantation and get this kind of success rate. So why I'm here today is I want to plant this windbreak. Um, of pines and I've purchased some bare root seedlings from the Ferguson Forest Center to do that and uh, it's really important to plant windbreaks you know especially if you've got a field on your land um, you know why are they helpful you know certainly they're helpful in snow distribution um, shelter for wildlife food for wildlife um, you know in particular white pines you know when they get to the big size like those other ones I showed you there a lot of black bear like to go up in there their cubs seek refuge up in those trees um, windbreaks are good, especially with the coniferous forests, for uh, you know improving soil quality, reducing erosion, improving moisture control, things like that. So we're going to get started with the plant today. I'll show you the site that I'm going to plant it in. It's uh, just by the road up here, and uh, this year, well, this spring, I'm going to plant in the spring about 40 trees, um, white pine, and uh, the rows will be eight feet apart and the trees will be you know, six feet apart next to each other. Um, that'll give them plenty of space to grow. And then as they grow, um, you know, we'll prune them a bit, but it's gonna take several years for them to, to get to a height to begin pruning. The field here, it's a loamy sand. And as you can see, there's lots of uh, grass. This grass actually gets waist height uh, at some times in the spring. Um, so I'll have to go and tend that area um, around the white pine uh, just so that they don't have too much competition. Um, but as you can see, once they start shooting up, uh, they really uh, grow taller than the grass. They're actually quite good for this environment. I think that's why they've done so well uh, in this field. Okay, let's go and check out the site. All right, so here we are um, at the entrance of our property. You can see here, this is the part we want to do the windbreak. It's the road. So, a little pathway that goes up here. So right now we're just flagging out where each tree should be planted. And then if you go up this road here, you can see that the cabin, cabin's right up there. 
So I'll just show you some of the things I've got to get prepared today. It's an absolutely gorgeous day outside, perfect for planting. All right, so just got a few things here. One thing I wanted to show you is this book uh, about woodlot management. Very helpful for today's plant. Uh, it's called the Woodlot Management Handbook. As you can see there, it's very good. Uh, talks all about what to do for anything to do with your woodlot. Um, and reforesting and things like that. Um, so I really highly recommend this book if you have a woodlot and you need to manage it. So other things I've got, I've got some shovels, a bit of water, got my scythe in case we need to take down uh, some of the grasses. Now the grass is pretty tramped down, so I don't think it's going to be a major problem right now, but definitely when I'm maintaining this area I should use the scythe. I'm going to show you right here in a little shady spot. In the shady spot here I have my trees. So they came in this bag, nice and humid. With bare root stock, you have to be really careful. Um, they're very fragile, so you want to handle them almost like, you know, eggs. You know, they're really delicate. Um, do not leave them exposed to sun or air. You want to basically, you know, get them out of your pack, plant them quickly. Um, Potted stock is another thing that some people use, and that's actually, uh, you know, has the ball of soil on the end of the roots. So as you can see, these are my white pine seedlings. See, it's bare root stock, okay? There is no earth on that, so they're very prone to drying out in the sun and the wind. Um, so I'm going to put them back in this bag here um, while we get started, just so I don't end up with a problem in them uh, having a low success rate when we plant them. Okay, so as you can see here, where each of these little flags are, each of these little flags are is where we're going to plant a white pine. Okay, you can see them there. So again, the rows will be eight feet apart and the trees are going to be six feet apart in a row. That's um, sort of the best way to do it at this time. Okay, well, let's get started with the flagon. Always amazed when those professional planters go with their tree planting machines and just perfect straight lines. Always tell a replanted forest by how uh, much they're aligned. Okay, I think that's pretty good. That's decent. All right. There you go. Make sure if you do a gentle tug on the tree that it's not going to come right back out and you know you've done a good job. Okay, on to the next one. So now we're done the uh, pine plant, which is good, didn't take very long. Um, we're going to plant about five high bush cranberries. So you can see again, this is bare root stock as well. Uh, high bush cranberries are really great to plant um, in sort of wet areas, thickets, forest edges, along uh, streams. Um, they tolerate a wide variety of soil conditions. Um, the soil here is pretty rich because it's right up against the forest, so that's good. Um, in this area there's also willows, so I think they're going to do quite well here. Uh, we'll find out. It's a, a plant that produces uh, some really interesting, lovely tasting cranberries. 
Um, very high in vitamin C, obviously, and not only good for us, but good for local wildlife, deer, moose, uh, you know, encouraging ruffed grouse, um, grouse beaks, and other, you know, and other birds. So I've got five to plant today. Um, they grow about one to four meters tall, and they really bush out. Um, so looking forward to the day when that happens. They're quite small right now, as you can see, but uh, I'm sure in no time uh, they'll grow in the right conditions. They do like full sun, so as you can see, I'm in a full sun location. So again, because it is bare root stock, we're just going to uh, you know, dig a little wedge in the soil and uh, place the plant. All right, so we're just gonna stick that in the hole. and rich, very black. Lots of nutrients in there. put some of these cages around my high bush cranberry because I know lots of little woodland creatures are going to want to nip the tops of these right off, uh, rabbits and things like that. So just wanted to be on the safe side and do that. Okay, I'm going to have some lunch. All right, guys. So the next thing I've got uh, going in the ground here is a, a plum tree. I've also got some prunes on it as well. So it's a graft, so that means it's got uh, different varieties growing off of uh, uh, one um, main trunk. You can see you've got all the different ones right here. It's actually a pretty nice looking tree. I must say this one isn't for the wildlife, it's actually for my enjoyment when the fruits get on there. So got our hole dug right there. It's going to just go along the main laneway right here. So. Let's get this in the ground. The last thing I planted here is some spruce. So I've got a couple of these little guys here, one on either side of the laneway. And I think what I'm going to do um, in the next coming weeks is uh, bring in some stove pipe, like four inch stove pipe. And what I'll do is I'll put it down around the seedling and then I'll take a weed whacker and go around the outside of the seedling. The stove pipe obviously protecting the seedling. Um, just to make sure the competition stays low, the grasses are low around it so it gets maximal sunlight and uh, nutrients. Some people will put the stovepipe down and spray Roundup all around uh, the outside of the stovepipe to kill all the grass and plants around there so that the seedlings have a chance to grow. That's usually what we do in a, sort of a bigger plant situation, um, but I don't like using pesticides so we'll just do it the hard way I guess, mechanical labor, um, but that's fine. I don't like uh, pesticide residue in the soil to keep things as organic as possible. All right, guys, let me give you a tour and show you uh, the, uh, the plum tree here. It's finally got in the ground. Over here. So it's, there it is. Cabin's over there. I walk over here. Got the white pine plant in. In the fall, I'll do more. Maybe I'll do a few rows of red pine. White and red pine are sort of historically important trees in this area where there's lots of logging. So there we go. They are in the ground. I hope they do okay. Tend them as much as I can. Some more all everywhere you see a flag. There's one of those little pines in there. So guys, I hope they do okay. Um, it's going to rain here for the next two days. That's really helpful. I'm going to give them a little bit of water now, but um, you know, raining the next couple days will help uh, secure their position in the soil. And we'll see what happens. You know, I don't expect all of them to take, um, but we'll you know see how things go and uh, go from there. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed uh, spring planting for the day. It's an easy way to do it um, to get the bare root seedlings and pop them in the ground. I'm uh, hoping to have a beautiful windbreak, you know, in the coming years. Um, you know, once they hit, you know, several feet tall, 
um, they'll really start taking off. Um, but you know, it's gonna take a few years for them to kind of get established. And uh, that's why I'm getting started now so I can enjoy them, you know, when I get older. All right, guys, as always, have a good week. And if you haven't subscribed already, don't forget to, forget to hit subscribe and thumbs up if you'd like to see more videos like this. Until next time.